Hollywood High is a 1976 teen sexploitation comedy from director Patrick Wright. The movie opens at the real Hollywood High. A group of friends are done school, so they head out for a day at the beach. Yay! Life is fun! This is Monica, BB, Jan, and Candy. I'm not a big car guy. <laughs> this thing is awesome. Oh no, here comes the creeper van. I'd say there's a 100% chance they have the If This Van's a Rockin' bumper sticker. These high school students are in their 30s. What's this? High school kids doing the speed limit and having fun? Not on my watch. Hey girls, you're on the wrong side of the road. Psh, stupid police. Won't let us drive into oncoming traffic. The cop pulls over the same place he was just parked. <laughs> all right, what's all this then? The girls then shill for McDonald's. They then drive away. Wait, they can do that? Teehee, we're pretty. Go to hell, cop. The girls discuss important things that are going on in the world. Just kidding. They talk about which one of them is the biggest hoe. It was right after we caught her having lunch in Mike Telfaro's gym shorts. <laughs> and he was in him at the time. Well, it was during gym class. <laughs> Candy then demonstrates proper form. I'm just going to leave this on a permanent loop. Monica is giving off some serious Diane Copeland from Surf Nazis Must Die vibes. The girls continue with the meaningful conversations. Then they discuss all the places they've had sex. Why are you sexing on my pizza parlor? Mamma mia! Five minutes into the film and it's everything I hoped it would be. I feel like the director is just filming his own personal fetish video. If the movie was just this for the next 80 minutes, I'd be fine with that. Someone should tell Jan there's a reason you don't wear white bikinis. The message I'm getting here is, life is awesome when you're hot. Over on the beach, Bobo is trying to interrupt the shenanigans with the promise of more shenanigans. He supplies the girls with beer and weed in exchange for, uh, you know. If I blow grass, I'll be riding more than you're bored. How you hanging? Okay, 15 minutes into the film, and there isn't even a hint of plot. Candy, don't waste that man's beer, that's rude. Stoned and drunk, it's time for dancing. Total enjoyment, who'd ever guess? Down on the beach of Van <laughs> Somewhere, this guy's in a retirement home, still telling people about the greatest day of his life. They all head back to the booze blanket, but are stopped by these guys. Turns out the girls have boyfriends, who aren't so happy with this. The leader of the gang is the Fonz. No! The Fens! Fenzie's chick screwing off, hey! Hey! Oh, boo! This isn't copyright infringement. This is copyright incringement. What's Sam Kinison doing in this? And Evan Stone? And, uh, uh, this guy who doesn't really look like anyone. Fen scares Bobo away with his deadly switch comb. The gang then just decides to have sex. The scene is responsible for at least several STDs. There is so much going on in this scene that I can't show. So, I'll let the music do the explaining. The next day, back in school. The way the movie started, I thought this was their summer vacation. They get ready for class and the teacher is grandpa in a wig! You have intruded. Upon the ceremony of blood. This movie rules! He's gonna teach them history. Or try to. Oh no, he's playing this caricature. Boys! <laughs> A. B. A. U. T. Full. The scene is mercifully cut short by a fire drill. The girls then head back out on the road. Wouldn't this imply that it's July? They need what? We need big dick. Right! <laughs> the girls pull into a gas station, and is that May West? No! It's June East! This movie has everything. I stand corrected. Now this movie has everything. Miss East can't pay for her car repairs, so the girls decide to step up and help out a legend. I wonder what 
he'd take for those keys? Me? I think I'll drop his face in my cleavage. Modern problems require modern solutions. To thank the girls for helping her out, she invites them over to her house. Come on, say the line. Why don't you come down and see me sometime? Yeah! Back to school for a French test. The girls figure out the best way to distract the nerd so they can cheat. The teacher then beats up the nerd? Her name is what? Please, Miss Crotch, let me sit somewhere else where I'm, I'm safe. Kevin has to stay after class for... Yeah, I know where this is going. That night, the girls head to the Pizza Plus. They made Fez's bike sound like a motorcycle. That's where we hang a lot. 30 minutes in, no plot. They go to the pizza place and get spaghetti. Then, food fight! This goes on for, and I'm not kidding, over five minutes. Officer Archie arrives to break up the fun, but gets spaghetti up his ass. Oh, those kids. Always assaulting police officers. They go to a swimming pool to wash off their clothes. You'd think they'd be used to cleaning up stains. Then, more sex. The next day, the girls are talking about their adventures. They head to visit Miss East. Baby goes upstairs and finds Miss East having sex with a lion. They convince her to give them all acting lessons. They drive down the road and try to distract the guys. This alerts Officer Pee Pants. This guy does his Teen Wolf impersonation. The cop has to give up the pursuit because he runs out of gas. Back to the beach. This movie seriously is 90% musical hijinks. That is the best product placement Mounds has ever had. The girls don't want to have sex, so they all run around Scooby-Doo style. La 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 lady, oh baby, you got something for me. Oh yes, sirree. Fluffy, fluffy, stuffy, and the yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a fever for the beaver weaver, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey pot, peachy pie. Take it to the wild class. La 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 lady, oh baby, you got something for me. Three hours later, Sergeant Stadenko arrives. Instead of giving them a ticket, he flattens their tires. They don't want to go anywhere private, so they all just have sex in the tent. I just want to say, sex on the beach, the drink, and the act both suck. The girls want some privacy, so they tell the guys they can use Miss East's house in exchange for sex if they then have sex with Miss East. So an hour into the movie, the plot is finally fully revealed. They need somewhere private to have sex, even though they just do it anywhere anyway. Officer Rufus could be the worst cop in cinematic history. Candy goes Gallagher on him. They head to Miss East so the guys can have her teach them a lesson. Fens is exhausted, so the guys all rush to be next. Ew. They now have the house to themselves, but the guys just want to sleep. The girls try to get a rise out of them, but nope. So they do what else? Strip nude and go swimming. They get a call from Miss East. Who tells them she doesn't need the guys anymore? I have found the greatest lover of all time. They rush to see who it is. Oh, look at this guy. It's gotta be the cop, right? They open the door and it's Grandpa! Hollywood High was filmed in the mid-70s in locations around Hollywood, California. They only had a few exteriors at the real Hollywood High. This was director Patrick Wright's only movie. He was an actor who had much better luck there with almost a hundred credits to his name. Movies like Bare Knuckles and TV shows like Night Court. He played an uncredited role as the bumbling police officer. So the director filming his fetish eh, might not be too far off. The majority of the cast didn't do much. Aside from High Pike, Suzanne Severed, and Joseph Butcher. Pike I've talked about before. He was in Blade Runner, Dolomite, and one of my favorite bad movies, hack lantern Joseph Butcher was Wild Boy in Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Quite a departure from this movie. Suzanne Severed was in Van Nuys Boulevard. And the Dutch soap opera, I'm not even going to attempt to try to say this. Ray Sperling was the standout for me. She was the funniest of the girls and also the actress that seemed to be having the best time. And yes, I also thought she was the prettiest. Unfortunately, she only did one other movie, Game Show Models, which was another sexploitation-type film. Really sad to find out that she died in 2017 of lung cancer at 62. 
There was a Hollywood high too, but it was a sequel in name only. It was made to capitalize on the success of the biggest exploitation film of the time, Porky's. Hollywood High is the kind of movie that just doesn't exist anymore. The whole film is just the girls looking for somewhere to have sex. That's it. It's a threadbare plot, no character development, and when they aren't having sex, they're talking about having sex. Hollywood High is, and I'm saying a word I've been using a lot lately, fun. Nothing else quite fits. Well, maybe dumb fun. It frequently made me laugh out loud at the absurdities and random moments like this. Fancy, all his goodies. Fancy, all his goodies! Fancy, all his goodies! Yay, goodies! The whole movie is just an excuse to get the girls naked and doing idiotic things. The only sexploitation that's worse in that regard is maybe the cheerleaders. It's so stupid, it's pure. There's a charm to just how ridiculous it is. Very little is known about the production, but it looks like everyone had a good time. Well, except for maybe the guy who had to clean up after this. If this looks good to you, I suggest you track it down and watch it immediately. You're welcome. I don't get it. Oh, for Christ's sake, Mike, do you want to ball the rest of your life in a rock? You got somewhere better. <laughs>